Hello, my name is Pastor Mike. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our worship service at St. Paul. Today we will be beginning a two-part series. Today's theme is A Path Toward Faith. Our opening hymn for today is Father Welcomes. service this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Receive the absolution. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, 
In your merciful goodness, you've called us to be your children in the waters of our baptism. In this gift through your Son, Jesus, you promise the forgiveness of sins and an eternal life to those who believe. By the power of your word, may the Holy Spirit keep us in the faith until life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The scripture reading for today is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, with selected verses. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be made known to you, and give ear to my words. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart, and Peter and, and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. And with many other words he bore witness and continued to exhort them, saying, Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our message for today is entitled, A Path Toward Faith. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, amen. There are many people who believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died on a cross for the forgiveness of our sins, and then, three days later, was resurrected from the dead to offer up for us all an eternal life. A thanks be to God that many Christians believe in the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yet, it's sad for me to say that some of them don't. Last week, we learned that seeing was believing for the disciples. For when the risen Lord Jesus came and stood among them, it even convinced a doubting man like Thomas. But since the Son of God has already ascended into heaven, we don't get the opportunity anymore to touch or see the scars of Jesus. So how is it possible for us to believe in things that we can't 
see. In our scripture reading for today, when the Apostle Peter preached his first sermon on the day of Pentecost, once the people of God heard the truth about how they crucified and killed the Lord Jesus, they were cut to the heart. And when they asked, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Seeing their sadness and remorse, Peter urged them to change, to seek God as he strongly encouraged them with these words. Save yourselves from this crooked generation. So those who received his word were baptized. And there were added that day to those who believed about 3,000 souls. As you can plainly see, this text of scripture gives us a well-defined and clear path toward faith. Beginning with verse number 36, the word of God through the preaching of the law revealed the truth to the people about their sin. And sometimes the law of God can place a feeling of guilt within our hearts. Then, in the midst of this pain, as we see in verse number 37, it gives some people the desire to change. Then, once a person acknowledges God and is willing to listen to his word, this repentance can lead to a change of heart when the person is baptized. Then, as the person is baptized... They receive the precious gift of the Holy Spirit, who by the grace of God gives us the ability to trust and believe in what we cannot see. Today, many Christians believe in their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But it's sad for me to say that some of them don't. Why? Have they lost their way? Have they drifted off the path toward faith? Or have some of them possibly never found it? Let me explain. In our scripture reading for today, God has revealed to us that the pathway toward faith begins with, number one, the word of God. And then, within the Word of God, number two, the truth about sin is revealed. Our guilt then sometimes, number three, leads people to change. Now this is where our free will comes into play. Because number four, change can lead to repentance. If a person is receptive toward God. And then... After a person repents, comes baptism. In baptism, the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to believe. This is a well-defined and clear path towards faith that the Lord God has revealed to us. The problem is that nowadays, many Christians don't follow this path. In fact, I think it's safe for me to say that some of God's people have skipped a few steps. Because today, most people are baptized as infants. Now, while it's good and God-pleasing that these little ones receive the gift of the Holy Spirit very early on, but what happens if these kids over time don't become familiar with the Word of God? Or what happens when these teenagers 
don't come to know about the truth of their sin. Would they ever feel guilt or remorse towards God over their sin? Probably not. And if this is the case in time, would these children of God ever desire to change? To turn to Him? Or for that matter, repent? I don't think so. And that's part of the reason why many Christians today don't believe. Because they've skipped too many steps. Here's a question for us to consider. What good is it if you have the ability to trust and believe, but you don't know what to believe? In other words, how can our hearts and our minds be opened to understand the Scriptures if we're not in the Scriptures? Next week, as we continue our discussion about the path toward faith, We'll spend some time walking with Jesus on the road to Emmaus with a couple of his disciples. So until next time, in the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you have gathered us together to celebrate that Jesus has risen from the dead. Through the gift of your word and in the power of your Holy Spirit, you have revealed to us the good news that delivers to us eternal life when we turn to you and acknowledge your Son's sacrifice and glorious resurrection. A Father in heaven, the faith that we have in our own resurrection gives us peace and joy in the midst of life's troubles. As you have led us on our path toward faith, give us the desire to reach out to those who have yet to complete this journey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God in heaven, it is in times like these that remind us that we are completely dependent upon you. During this time, we ask you to help us remain vigilant and wise. Guide our government to lead us. Sustain our police, firefighters, EMTs, and our health care workers. Lord, provide our local businesses with the resources they need so they may remain open. And empower your church so that we can be a beacon of hope to those who are seeking you. If it is according to your will, spare our communities and our loved ones from this virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, we give you thanks as we pray for Wayne Hass, who's celebrating his 98th birthday this weekend. We also thank you for Christopher Callan, who is celebrating his birthday this week, and to Rob and Julie Headley, who are celebrating their 34th wedding anniversary today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of love, we humbly ask you to provide healing to all in need. We specifically pray for Catherine Markier, Harvey Spurl, Carol Wells, Ed Wheelwright, Denny Meyerhofer, Luann Jordan, Darlene Steffes, Lou Paglin, Mary Ambrosia, Karen Steffes, and those who are in our hearts and minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn for today is All Who Believe and Are Baptized. for joining us for our worship service today at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Elizabeth, Illinois. Uh, and please feel free to join us next week as we spend some time walking with Jesus. God's blessings.